Hello YouTube! Hello everybody! Welcome to the second lesson for the Greek language. At the previous lesson, we have learned the Greek alphabet, the vowels and consonants that constitute the Greek alphabet. In this lesson, we will learn some letter combinations that make a special pronunciation each time. So, let's start. At first, we will watch some main vowel combinations. The first combination is um, the combination with the letter alpha plus iota. together are pronounced E the most of the time the second one is Epsilon plus Iota that are pronounced in most cases E afterwards is Omicron plus iota that are pronounced e as well together and uh, last but not least we have the letter omicron plus the letter y that uh, together are pronounced the most of the time u As you can realize, I said the most of the time. Um, but there are some exceptions. For instance, we have alpha, iota, epsilon, iota, Omicron, Iota, and Omicron, Y. If we put uh, the tiny symbol which in Greek we call tonos at the first letter each time, We pronounce these as correspondingly as I, A, OI, and OI. But if we put the tonos uh, at the second letter each time, or if we don't put tonos at all, we pronounce this correspondingly E, I, I, and U. Um, last, but not East. If we need to write in a word together to have these uh, combinations each time correspondingly, like alpha, yota, but we want to pronunciate it as I and not E, and we don't need, we don't need uh, to put uh, tonos. Or in case that we need to put the tonos, but um, we want to ra to study this as I, A, OI, or OI, we have two tiny marks that we use. In Greek language, we call them 
διαλυτικά. It means, let's say, dissolvents. For instance, I don't uh, know which is the appropriate word to describe them in English at the moment, but in Greek we call them dialectica. That dissociate the pronunciation. That means we put over here these two full stops here and here, and to the rest correspondingly, and we we read this as I because there are the dialectica, the two full stops, one um, at the left on the top of the letter Y and uh, one at the right of the letter Y and correspondingly to the other to the others as well. Here and uh, here, they are full stops. Just I cannot write proper full stop at the moment. And this exactly on the y, like this. So in this case, we will read them as i, a, oi, and oi. Let's uh, clean. Let's erase now what I have written over here and uh, we go on to the second slide now let's uh, see the first combination of alpha plus yota alpha yota so uh, they are pronounced together E, like Erasmus. One word that uh, starts with this combination and uh, finishes with this letter combination as well is the word Esthanome. Esthanome is a passive verb a passive Greek verb and how can we realize that this is a passive verb? Every verb that has this suffix the suffix ome it is a passive verb in Greek language Estanome means I feel um, another word is the word estima that means feeling as you see over here there is alpha yota and is pronounced estima not aistima but estima and you see there is the tonos at the yota not at the alpha I will make a special uh, lecture for the intonation for the Greek uh, language. When do we use the tonos appropriately? Just I say very few stuff over here. Important stuff. Um, another word is the word esthesi, that is sense. As well, you see over here, this word starts with alpha yota and there is the tonos at the yota. Let's go on to the second combination. Epsilon plus yota together are pronounced e. Like Italy. One word that starts with this letter combination is Irini, that means peace. This we can use it as a name as well. But whenever we use it as a name, we have to write the word Irini with capital Epsilon, like this. As you see over here, 
this epsilon is capital and together are pronounced E, not A but E, E ring. And a very important uh, verb is the Greek verb to be. And uh, in Greek it is the verb ime, that means I am. As you can see, there is, it contains two combinations, two vowel combinations. The first is epsilon yota, that, that makes um, the sound e, and e at the end, alpha yota, that uh, make the sound e. So it is pronounced ime. Um, now let's uh, study this verb more specifically. The verb ime. Ego ime means I am. Over here I would like to explain something. As in English we have the am that fits only to I, in Greek the word in fits only to I, in Greek ego as well. This ego means I. Um, over here, in English language, we don't uh, say am, but we say I am or we say I am. But in Greek language, we can say only am, ime, because the am it's only to I. We cannot use like you am or she am. It's like the am, it's only to I. That is why we don't need to use a go ime. We just need to say ime. And the other people understand that a go ime. That is I who am. We don't uh, use it in English. It may looks uh, it may look weird for you, but uh, in Greek is like this. We go on S C is that means you are. But is singular. In English language, whenever you say you are, that may mean you are as a single person, either, or you are as a group of people. Um, in Greek language, it's different. That you are as a single person, and this this is um, you are but singular like the only one person we have another you are for plural we go on aftos in that means is Aftos in Afti in that it means uh, C is 
αυτό είναι. That means it is. And uh, εμείς είμαστε. That means we are. Over here I have put this εμείς in uh, brackets because this είμαστε it's a single word that fits only with a means that means we we used to say we are you are they are so we see that um, they are we use it for three things either we or you or they but um, in Greek language we have the word είμαστε and it fits only to a means. It fits only to we. We are. That is why we don't need to put the word a means. We just say είμαστε. That means we are. After is εσείς είσαστε or είστε that is you are but in plural you are as a group of people and not as a single person the most of the time and I say the most of the time because sometimes in Greek um, we use to speak in plural to one person that we want to give respect. For instance, if you speak to your teacher or to your professor or to your employer, you use plural. This does not happen in English. It happens in Greek and in some other languages. Um, whenever we use to speak to a person who is a professor or who is a, phone a foreigner to us, to an unknown person and we want to give respect, we use plural. In English language, there is you are as a group of people and you are as a single person. Uh, so, either you speak you are a family. A family contains, let's say, three or two uh, persons, uh, people, some more than one person anyway. Uh, this is for plural, and whereas if um, you speak to a friend, you use the singular. In Greek, in English, excuse me, it is the same. You are, and you are, but in Greek, it's different. It, we used to say, εσύ είσαι, to a single person, and εσείς είσαστε, or είστε, because we justify, we simplify this word because it's, we consider this big and we just say ISTE. So we use ISTE either if um, we want to speak to a group of people or if we want to speak to a person who we would like to give respect to him or to her. For instance, if we want to say, to ask somebody if he is a professor or she is an employer, is the cathedral? Are you a professor? We will use plural.
because by this way we give respect by using plural and afterwards we have a in that means they are and over here I have to explain something the plural of he in English language is they as well for the plural for C is they and the plural of it is they so in English language there is a single word but in Greek language there is a special uh, word for the plural of he or him um, the plural of aftos in uh, English in Greek excuse me there is afti over here we see omicron and yota that uh, I'm gonna teach after the verb in that is another combination that um, make together the pronunciation e afti in that means they are but only for masculine people um, actually if we have a group of people that they are men and women as well we use afti in because they are mixed they are not only uh, females but they are females and males so we will use afti in now we go on aftes in that means they are but only females when we have a group of females a group of women for instance and we want to say that they are clever we used to say in Greek language aftes in exitness or more simply in exitness because exitness denotes uh, female clever people um, so aftes in they are only for female feminine and um, last but not least afta in means they are for neutral stuff it's the plural of it afta in the plural of afto that is it in greek language so because this verb the, ver the Greek verb uh, to be is important. We are gonna study this one more time, but without the English, um, without the Latin words over here. Evo in, that means I am. Esi ise that means you are for only one person and it is informal aftos in that means he is afti in that means she is and afto in that means it is emis imaste that means we are or simply imaste 
εσείς είσαστε or είστε we simplify the word είσαστε and we just say είστε that means you are but either for many people or for one person uh, to whom we would like to give respect that is why we speak to him in plural and this is formal and αυτοί είναι they are for masculine people or for mixed masculine and feminine but it has to be at least one man in for masculine to be able to use this αυτοί είναι αυτές είναι means they are but only for females if there is no single man in the group αυτές είναι and αυτά είναι is they are but for neutral stuff in plural one thing that I forgot to tell you over here We say αυτός, whereas we don't write with the letter C like a tos, but we write it with y like this. Αυτός. Um, and why it is it we read this as αυτός and not αυτός, αυτή, αυτό, or αυτή. I test I da correspondingly. We have said that the Y is pronounced E and not F. At the end of this lecture, I have planned to teach you that there, um, that there is a special combination with this letter alpha and epsilon or epsilon and epsilon correspondingly sometimes we read this combination alpha and epsilon as of and sometimes of but at the end of this lecture I'm gonna be more focused and uh, when we have Epsilon and Epsilon. We read this as F or F according to the special occasion, its time. But this I'm gonna focus more at the end of this lecture. Um, we Go on to say something more about the verb in The phrase pos is it uh, means how are you? And uh, it's for one person and informal form. And I have to mention this as well, that um, the question mark, the Greek one, we write like this, like the semicolon, the English one semicolon, the full stop, 
and comma below. It is the Greek question mark. Whereas in English, we write it like this. The Greek one is like this. Like this over here. So, uh, let's erase. And um, we go on. For instance, we have this phrase, Pos is a simera. That means, how are you today? But, we use it only for a friend, for instance, or to our mother. Uh, it's informal. Whereas, if we want to speak like this to a professor, or to our employer, we will use plural. Pos iste. It is for many people. For instance, uh, if we want to ask a group, how are you? Either a group or a single person. Um, how is him? But if he is, for instance, a teacher, etc., and we want to give respect, we will ask him in plural. How are you? Pos iste. Now I'm gonna draw a line. That means that we have finished um, the verb, uh, the Greek verb to be. And we will see how do we use another phrase for how are you. More specifically, in Greek language, we use to ask ti kanis, like this. It means, what are you doing? But... Um, we use this phrase as the English how are you one. It means that the most of the time in uh, Greek language we don't ask uh, how are you but we ask what are you doing and it means how are you. Titanis in plural it is ti kanete. It is what are you doing? That means how are you? In plural. And we use it either for a group of people or for a single person when we would like to give respect. Let's see a phrase. Ti kanete re pedia. How are you, kids or guys? The word re, uh, it is very informal and we use only among friends. For instance, if um, you have some friends and uh, you would like to ask by a friendly way, how are they today? You can ask like this. That means, how are you, re kids? But the word re is very informal. Sometimes, we, in Greek, we used to say that it is abuse to say re. We, it's uh, very prohibited. We must not say to one uh, professor or uh, to one teacher. And sometimes we must not say to our parents. We must not speak like this to our parents. This re 
is uh, very informal and only among friends we can say. Now we go on to see the following combination of uh, vowels, which is the combination of Omicron, O, plus Yota, E. Together, they are pronounced E as well. Um, like Illinois, E. One uh, word that starts with this combination is estrogono. That means estrogen. Um, this we can use as an article. It's article for a plural masculine stuff. Such as Iandres. That means the men. E. And um, but this is only for plural, the for plural, and only for masculine stuff. E Andres, because the men are masculine. That is why we put E, uh, we go on. Whereas O Andras, E O is the article for. Uh, Masculine singular as well. We can use it the letter O, and this is article for a uh, masculine singular O Andras that means the man. We go on the final. Uh, combination of the main vowel combinations is Omicron plus Y together are pronounced U let's go on are pronounced U like TU Like this O over here. Like Uranos, that means sky. We write it like this Omicron and Y. Uranos. Or Ura, that is tail, that means tail. Ura. Or Uli. That is star we with Omicron and Y. We go on. And now we are gonna read some consonant. We are gonna study some consonant combinations. There are two combinations of consonant letters. The first one is with uh, the letter gamma plus the same letter gamma and the other one is the combination of letter gamma plus the letter kappa both of them are pronounced good so the pronunciation G it is uh, written either by this way in Greek language with uh, gamma and gamma or by this way by gamma and kappa both of them are pronounced G like egg 
but when do we use uh, this one and when the other one? So we use the first combination of gamma and gamma under the following uh, circumstances. When there is one word that uh, ends with uh, the letter E. Sorry, I will write quite better the letter me over here. And when there is another word that starts with the letter gamma, when there is another word that comes from these two words, for instance, then uh, we write this uh, new word with uh, gamma and gamma. I will be more specific. For instance, the word sigenis that means a relative. For instance, a relative can be a father, a mother, or a sister, siblings, cousins, etc. Sigenis. That means a relative. This word comes from the word sin, that means plus, and uh, the other word genos that means gender. As you see, the first word ends with a uh, me, whereas the other word genus starts with gamma. That is why the new word sigenis we write it with double gamma. C genis. And another rule is in words with historical orthography or established writing with gamma and gamma, of course we use gamma and gamma, such as larigas, that means larynx. And this word is written with gamma and gamma. The word Agelos, that means angel. This can be used as a name as well, but uh, this alpha, it has to be written by a capital alpha like this. Agelos. Um, or the word Adelia, that means England. As well, over here we see two double gamma, Aglia, that means England. Now, when do we use gamma plus kappa? We use G with uh, gamma plus kappa when there is Ni plus kappa origins, when there are origin of uh, one word that uh, ends with me and there is another word that starts with uh, kappa if we combine these two hypothetic uh, words we will write the new word like this that would contain gamma plus kappa.
such as the word signonia, that means transport, like trains, airplanes, maybe not airplanes, but uh, bus or buses, like taxis, the public transport. In Greek, it is called Sigynonia, and this word comes from the word sin, that means plus, and finishes with the letter me, and the word kinonia, that means society, and this word starts with letter kappa, and um, the combination of this make the word Sigynonia and it is written with gamma plus kappa. Now, a second rule is in words with historical orthography or established writing with gamma and kappa. We use gamma and kappa such as agiri that means bracket and we write the word agiri with gamma and kappa or the word agira that means alcohol and we write as well with gamma and kappa agira is as well the capital city of Turkey, but we will write this with capital Alpha. And uh, we can use Tonos because it's capital. Sometimes we use or sometimes we don't put. So, um, we go on. Or the word Agalia, that means hat. I shouldn't have put this alpha capital, but it doesn't matter. Let's write it like this. Agaya, over here, we write it with gamma and kappa. Agaya, that means hug. Um, or at the beginning of the words, always. I mean, whenever we need to write B at any Greek word at the beginning, we will always write with gamma and kappa, never with gamma and gamma, such as the word gray, that means the color gray, because this word Greek starts with G. We write it gamma and kappa because it's at the beginning of the word. Or the word grizzo, it's the same, but we use it mainly as an adjective. Is as an adjective. Like uh, the phrase grizzo sineco, that means gray cloud. Grizzo is adjective that denotes that the cloud is gray. Again over here we write with gamma and kappa. Another rule is in Greek words that have a foreign origin, that words that we take from other languages, mostly uh, we write them with gamma and kappa, such as the word zugla, that means jungle. We write it gamma with gamma and kappa because we have taken this word from the word jungle. I don't know from which or countries this origin this word, the origination of this word, but maybe from English language can be. 
there is an exception uh, such as the word spaghetti we write like this with gamma and gamma even if uh, this word is not Greek maybe it's Italian spaghetti we write it uh, with gamma and gamma and this is um, exception we put the tonus over here spaghetti another word for spaghetti in uh, Greek language it is macaronia I will not write it now so we go on now um, we will learn some vocabulary some words for the combination of uh, gamma and gamma and why will I teach you these words theoretically uh, we use many gamma and kappa for the rest of the words and uh, I mean the most uh, letter, the most uh, uh, words are written with uh, gamma and kappa that is why we learn the least words to be able to remember when do we use gamma and gamma and when do we use gamma and kappa over here um, I will mention the most common words that we use to write with gamma and gamma and they are like agelos that means angel uh, agizo that means I touch Aguri, the Cattenberg, Mugamara, that is muteness, Mugos, that is mute, Paragelia, that means ordering, Paragelno, that means I order, Spagoramenos, that means niggard or screwed. Uh, sometimes we use this word in Greek. Spagos, that uh, means twine or string. Stragalizo, that means I struggle. Stragizo, that means I drain or I ring. Strogilevo, that means I make round something, for instance. Strogilos, that means uh, round. Sigenis, as we mentioned before this uh, word, that means relative. Sigrafeas, that means writer. Sfigo, that means I squeeze. Sfugari, that is the sponge. E, sfugarizo, that means I mop up or I swab. And Sfugaristra, that is the mop. Fegari, that means moon. And fego, that means I glow. Uh, that was the vocabulary. And we go on. Just some Greek words over here. Over here, we have now 
uh, vowel combinations with vowel and consonant sound. We have alpha plus epsilon, and as I mentioned uh, earlier, the word aftos that is written with alpha and epsilon, like this. Aftos or afti or afto that means uh, he or him and afti with uh, eta means she and afto means uh, it etc. Do we have another combination? Epsilon plus Epsilon. So, both of them are uh, written either of or of. And Epsilon, Epsilon are uh, pronounced F or F. Not written, excuse me, pronounced, I would like to say before. Now, uh, yes, are pronounced either uh, of or of, ev or f. Now, but when do we pronounce of? or add these combinations and when do we pronounce of or f so the letter combination alpha the letter combinations alpha epsilon and epsilon epsilon are pronounced of a when follows vowel, for instance, Evangelia, that is a name, you see, we have E, Epsilon, Epsilon, I mean, and follows a vowel, that is the letter Alpha, that is why we pronounce over here this Epsilon plus Epsilon, or when there is the letter beta like evia evia uh, is a, a very big island the second big island of Greece the second uh, bigger island of uh, Greece or biggest island, the second one. So, Vita, uh, Gamma as well, Evgenia. No, 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 Evgenia is a name. Evgenia, that means kindness. We have Ev and uh, Gamma. That is why we pronounce this Ev, Evgenia. Delta, such as Evdemonia, Evdemonia, that means bliss or felicity, Zeta, such as Evzonas, Evzonas, that means Evzon in English, is a Greek soldier who wears a yoke like skirt and belongs to a select Greek infantry regiment, is an infantryman in the Greek army. Lambda, such as Avli, that means yard or culture yard. Me, such as 
ευμάρεια, that means prosperity, me, such as ethnia, that means favor or grace, ρο, such as Ευρώπη, that means Europe. And uh, this tab and zeta. Uh, such as there is a surname which is called a Zoglu. We read this out because there is this combination. Not tau, but tau and zeta, because there is an exception over here. If there is only tau, um, we would read this as af or f. Now, but it is tough and zeta over here, and that is why we read this as of Zoglu. We go on, and now we will see uh, when these letter combinations alpha, epsilon, and epsilon, epsilon are pronounced of or f corresponding it. They are pronounced af or f when follows theta like afthormitos that means spontaneous afthormitos kappa such as efkarimia that means clarity or perspicuity P such as prosvectus that means welcome that uh, if a man is welcome we say this man is welcome that is F prosvectus or F prosvecti if it's for a female F prosvecto if it is for a neutral stuff. So F pros vectors. When follows sigma, such as Australia, that means Australia. And when follows tough, but not tough and zeta, such as Aftos, as we have mentioned earlier, we read this af, aftos, or we said as we said earlier, afti, afto, and in plural, afti, aftes, afta. So, and there is as well. Uh, when when follows phi such as f frosini f frosini is a name as well that means happiness this name but uh, we use the happiness like in Greek words hara mainly in modern Greek I will write like this. Kara. We write like this. That means uh, happiness. But uh, this word means hara as well, means happiness, but we use it as a name of females. That is why it is written with capital Epsilon.
So, and when follows the letter C, such as the word of Hienas, that means neck. We have another word as well for uh, neck, we call it lemos, but we call it sometimes Afienas as well. And it is pronounced af because follows the letter C. Afienas. So, and this comes to the end of the second uh, lesson. I would like to thank you for your attention. Please like, uh, comment, uh, any question or whatever you would like to comment on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. And please visit my website www.learngreekonline.tk <laughs> A very good uh, opportunity over here for TK is to remember Titanis as how are you? T Canis That means how are you? Just kidding. Anyway, uh, thank you for your uh, attention and see you at the next lesson.